Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I've run into a problem. Something that a lot of you have run into and asked me questions about. This is the first time I get a chance to actually demonstrate how I would do it. What I have is a garden rake with a broken handle. Snap right off. After a few hundred years, they tend to get rotted down here in the, the little ferrule, and that means that they snap off at about the rivet. So we're going to cut this handle down and fit it back into this. Now for the first part of the operation, I'm going to use a thing called a hollow auger. A hollow auger is just, well, it's not just, it's really a quite fascinating piece of equipment. It's got a sharp blade here that shaves away the wood. And it'll cut quite a bit. Whatever you set this si diameter for between these two uh, V-shaped jaws, that's the diameter it's going to cut to. I've already preset this to match the diameter of the ferrule. So this hollow auger is going to cut that handle down so that the ferrule will slip over it. That's only going to take it down to the major diameter unless I reset it and cut it down two or three steps in here and I don't think I'll do that. I'll take it down to the major diameter so I get a nice square cut on this and then I'll just take the rest of it down with a sander or spoke shave. But you just put it on there and then you crank. And kind of like a pencil sharpener It just cuts away. It raises his handle up a little bit. Now this doesn't have any kind of a pilot to pull it in. It's all just push on it. You also have to check every once in a while to make sure you're still staying standard because this only has about five eighths of an inch of guide on it. So it'll cut pretty much close to that size, but it will tend to wander if you don't watch it. It's also a very big chunk of wood that I'm cutting off. So it takes a lot of effort. There. I'm going to trim off the end here. And I wandered a little bit off center. Won't matter a whole lot, but it is something that happens. As I said, it tends to wander around on you. There we go. Now I want to pull this out if I can. Maybe I can grab it with this pair of side cutters. There we go. You 
Good, I can use that again. There we go. Uh, the ferrule will start on there, but we're going to have to trim this end down so it'll fit inside that ferrule. That's the nail hole. It's dragging a little bit and that won't bother anything. But as I go around, just looking to see where the rust is showing up on the tube or on the wood. And I just shave away the rusty spots because that's where it's hitting. rough spots cleaned up I'm gonna go after it with a 151 spoke shave which is a much more controlled tool and lets me take off just what I need it's awful easy to go too far and really what I want to have is a nice cone-shaped surface for that ferrule to slide up onto. Correcting for the out-of-round condition from the hollow water as I go. Using a, or a flat end punch to tap it off again. So I have the ability to knock it off of there without knocking big dents in it. I'm just shaving off the rusty spots. If your ferrule doesn't happen to be rusty, you can hold this old over a candle flame and the smoke will go up in there and mark the inside of the ferrule. You'll be able to use that as a guide.
There. Now we're driven on there good and solid. I need to drill a hole up to the center of the wood so that I can get this rake tines up into inside the wood and then drive that nail down in there and pin it. You can use anything you want to measure the size of the shaft. It doesn't have to be perfect because it is tapered. About 450 at its largest and 435 at its smallest. So that means the 716 drill bit is going to do a nice job for us. So I need my hole to go three inches deep. Yes, I cheated. I went and got the battery drill because I was puffing pretty hard by this time and I really wanted to get the job done. So if you're going to be upset because I didn't finish it with a breast drill, sorry. I just have to drive that in so it's lined up with that. That's up to the scratch mark. That should do it. And if I got it right, it's going to work. If not, we'll try something else. Looks like I got it right. Okay, so now we have the garden rig tines mounted back on there. Wasn't quite as easy as the pitchfork, 
mostly because I was trying to salvage an old handle. If I had a new handle, it would more than likely be just a case of driving it in and putting the pin in. But this handle was still good. It's just the very end of it. it had dry rotted from years and years of hanging. Okay, this job's done. On to the next one. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians as an underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.